Hello everyone, Sharif Panomsi here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're considering taking the next step with your partner, this video is for you. The lovebirds. I have 15 reasons, truly terrible reasons, why many of us get married. So let me hope you're doing it for the right ones because otherwise you may find yourself stuck in a very unhappy marriage. And trust me, no one wants that. So let me know in the comment section if some of these reasons sound familiar to you. And don't forget to subscribe. Terrible reason to get married, number one. Everybody's doing it. See, the social pressure to get married heats up whenever you start seeing wedding or bridal shower photos on social media. At first, it may seem like curiosity. Can you believe she's getting married so young? Can you believe she's getting married for the second time? But soon, it snowballs. And before you know it, Seeing the sparkly evidence of other post relationship status feels like a daily occurrence. And suddenly, you start feeling like everyone but you is getting married. But this is inaccurate. Do not let social media or people rush you. This is not a race. It's not a competition. I mean, even if everybody is getting married, what does that have to do with you or your relationship? Terrible reason to get married, number two. Choosing a husband or wife for the sake of your parents' interest. The fact is that at the end of the day, the person who will be undergoing the marriage is not your parents, not your relatives, or your siblings. The only one who will be going through it day by day is you. Think about what marriage will actually look like in broad daylight if the person you've chosen to marry is not really the person you want to be with. So if the main reason you're marrying your spouse is you know, to make your family happy, then you're signing away your happiness and will end up feeling really resentful if things go south. The best thing to do is to find the person you're happy with and marry in the timing that feels most comfortable to you. Terrible reason to get married, number three, money. Money. This is probably one of the biggest reasons why some of us choose to get married. As soon as we meet someone who has an amazing financial income, the thought of marrying and having a life with them seems like heaven. We will be financially secure. We will live in a luxurious lifestyle forever and ever. But the harsh truth is that not anyone's financial circumstances could ever truly be secure. Someone can go from being a millionaire to being bankrupt in a matter of months. If your reason to marry your spouse is due to the amount of cash they have, do consider what might happen if their income is normal. Think about the likelihood of them losing their job and you having to help with the finance. That is if you have some. These things could happen. And once we are married, you cannot just walk away whenever you feel like it. Just because he's not wealthy or she's not wealthy as she used to be. It's not that simple. And I'm not saying that it's wrong to marry someone with an abandoned financial income. Just be sure it's not the only reason. Plus, if suddenly a bad day comes and all that wealth is no more, you will have the heart and courage to stay in the relationship and support them fully. To add on that, there are some of us that will enter into a marriage because we believe that this will improve our life circumstances, you know, such as status, value, and security. That is a terrible reason too, if you ask me. Terrible reason to get married, number four. Because you want to have a big party. You want a big wedding. As funny as this sounds, it has and still is a reason for some. Look, parties are fine, even sometimes fun. But marriage is definitely not about a day. It's the opposite of a day. It's the rest of your life. It's every day, all the time. Even when you don't feel like it, it's not a joke. It is serious. It's a lifetime commitment and hopefully it's sometimes fun too. But truly, weddings couldn't have less to do with the marriage. Big weddings are cool and all, but don't let it be the only reason you get married. Terrible reason number five, family pressure. Are you one of those people whose family is driving nuts? Like everywhere you turn, there is an auntie giving you a look of Look, I understand the family pressure can be a bit hard to ignore, but if you're not ready for marriage and this topic comes up, please normalize setting boundaries with your family. 
casually change the topic if it comes up. Or straight up say, when I'm ready to take the next big step, you will be the first to know. But for now, I'm not going to discuss this with you. Say whatever works for you, respectfully. Terrible reason to get married, number six, sex. Unfortunately, big screen romance and sex scenes don't always depict the realities of sex. You will later discover that the sex you see in the movies and the picture you have in your head isn't nothing like the sex you will be having. So first, let go of the sex myth. Yes, sex is important. I know that. It's very important in a relationship, but unlike a hookup or a side chick or side nigger, it's not the defining part of the relationship. In a healthy and happy marriage, sex will always be there and usually be great every time you have it. Sex is a great feature of the marriage, but only part of the greater package. And for those who relate with this reason, let me first give you a reality check. Marriage does not mean you automatically get the sex. Yes, it's easier to have sex with your wife or your husband, but I am sure you've also heard of sexless marriages. Hey, people refuse to give each other some. So please don't marry because of sex, because you shall be disappointed. There is more to marriage than sex. Sex is part of marriage, but sex is not marriage. So don't set any kind of expectations for it. Terrible reason to get married, number seven. You think you've been together too long with your partner not to be married, and marriage just seems like the next logical step. This sometimes happens to couples who are living together. They slide into marriage, not because they have fully explored the idea of a permanent commitment and freely choose that for themselves, but because getting married is the next thing to do. Or they slide into marriage to fix a relationship that is limping along, thinking that their family's approval will fix their relationship. If this describes your relationship, slow down. Look more carefully at what marriage is. Are you ready, willing, and able to fulfill its responsibilities? There is no such thing as an external clock that can tell you when to do anything with your life. If there are issues you want to work on in your relationship, that's great. But just the fact of not being married doesn't have to be one of them. Terrible reason number eight. You think getting married will fix all the problems in your relationship. Quick answer, it won't. For some reason, a lot of people seem to think that something magical happens when you get married and all the fights and toxic cycles of behavior disappear. Like they tragic, this is, this is tragically misguided. Do not underestimate how much bigger your problems can get once you share a house with your spouse, have kids and share responsibilities. Don't, don't underestimate that. If you're bad at communicating in your relationship, miscommunications will only get worse in your marriage. If you don't have respect for one another, you won't gain it by getting married. You probably lose it even more. Basically, when you get married, things can even get better if they're already good but they can only get worse if they are already bad. So fix whatever needs to, fi to be fixed right now before you get married. Terrible reason number nine, because you're afraid of being alone. So many people enter mediocre or even downright toxic relationships out of fear of being alone. Yeah, being alone sucks. It really sucks. But what sucks even more though is marrying the next person who comes along simply because you're tired of being alone and then they turn out to be terrible for you. You've probably had this before, but marriage will not complete you. Only you can do that. No one is going to be happy with you if you can't be happy being by yourself. You need to be happy by yourself before you can make somebody else happy. But you're not happy because you don't have anyone in your life. Your value as a person is not determined by who you're with. And there is a difference between being alone and being lonely. We can be alone and not feel lonely because we are able to be happy and content without having a romantic partner. However, if we feel lonely and miserable being single, once we do find a partner, we won't necessarily be happy either. There is no guarantee. Do not assume that just because you have someone in your life, you'll automatically be happy. True happiness can and should only come from us, not anybody else. Marrying someone based on this will 
is a recipe for disaster as you will be expecting your partner to fulfill your happiness in ways that they will never be able to do. It's not your spouse's job to make you happy. It's not their job to fulfill you. If you put this sort of responsibility and unrealistic expectation on them, then you are setting yourself up for disappointment. Develop yourself into what you want to be first. Practice self-love. Be heavy on the self-care. Do some inner work. Fix your relationship with your Lord. Get healthy. Get serious about your career. Get your finances in order. Then find somebody who is excited to be with you because you both kick so much ass already. Terrible reason to get married, number 10, because it's practical. Depending on where you live, a legal marriage can come with many practical benefits. You may be tempted to marry because you'll get a spouse visa or a better job, etc. I mean, there is nothing wrong with receiving these benefits, but if they're the only reason you're marrying somebody, you know, committing to them till death do you part, then something is not quite right. The fact is that marriage isn't going to work unless both people are in it for each other and nobody else. Terrible reason to get married, number 11. Time pressure. This is mostly women, you know. However, there's some men that have also been caught up in this as well. They feel that their age clock is running out for the chance to get married and have children. So they begin to forego love and compatibility and commonality and set up for convenience just to have the title married. Terrible reason to get married, number 12, unplanned pregnancy. If you found yourself with an intended pregnancy, you may be wondering about getting married. It's possible that the pregnancy before marriage was not in your plans and the idea of being a single parent may not be appealing to you. This thought process can lead you to believe that the best decision for you is to get married to the baby's father. However, a shotgun wedding is not always the best idea. Having a baby together simply isn't enough reason to get married. Before you do anything drastic, wait it out. Take it slow. Do not marry out of obligation. Consider how well you know this person. Terrible reason to get married, number 13, society. Our society paints a very specific picture of a fulfilled life. Wedding, kids, a beautiful house. And as a result, we've always equated marriage as a big achievement, a sign of prosperity and maturity. No wonder many of us get married just to get that validation. You know, feeling socially accepted. We start to look to people around us and feel like we will be more socially accepted if we are married. And that's completely normal. You know, you don't want to feel left out. I get that. But you have to realize marriage is not a requirement for a happy life. We have been culturally programmed to believe this. Some cultures still push the idea of marriage as an essential part of life. There are a lot of cultures that groom children into understanding that their only way of acceptance, whether for religious reasons or familial reasons, marriage is the only goal, even if it kills them. I'm not saying that marriage is wrong. It is far from that. You know, it is half of your din. It's beautiful with the right person. Terrible reason to get married, number 14, to fill a gap. We've all had traumas from the past, and these traumas managed to snake their way into our everyday life and the decisions that we make. Like childhood trauma, especially, can be difficult to overcome. Many victims end up having the fantasy of a complete and happy family to compensate for the abuse or neglect that they experienced growing up, you know, as children. Others simply get married because they have nothing else to look forward to in life. And sometimes it is to do with other types of insecurities about the future. But you cannot build a good life with someone else if you continue harboring your old ones. These are things you need to deal with on your own before you take the big step. No one is going to fix your life for you. Marriage will not be a cure for your suffering. You must take time before you commit to looking inside, understand yourself more and heal. Terrible reason to get married, number 15, because you want to prove something. Maybe your aunties think you need to grow up already. Or maybe most of your relatives got divorced and you're determined to show the world that you're better than all of them. Or all your friends are married and you're trying to show them that, hey, I'm done being the third wheel. 
Sometimes it's a little more subtle, but just as messed up. Like some people see marriage as a status symbol. So they get married thinking they'll parade around town with their spouses and people will bow in their presence like they have conquered a kingdom or something. Whatever it is, getting married to prove something to someone is an awful reason to do it. The world, will, the world generally doesn't care if you get married. Billions of people have done it. We don't get a gold star just because we are married. You also don't get to rub it in anyone's face for more than what, a few weeks tops. And then what? I'll tell you what. Then you get stuck in a marriage trying to figure out, was it worth it after all? So if any of these terrible reasons to get married apply to your situation, well, first, don't get married. Second, work on your relationship skills. Learn about the healthy and toxic behaviors in a relationship. Check for qualities like kindness. Is there trust? Are they on the dean? Are they complete human beings? Are they loyal, mature? Are they responsible, respectful? Are they empathetic, consistent, reliable? Do they help you grow as a person? Do they share your vision of the future? Do they bring clarity or confusion? Do they fight fair? Is time a priority together? You know, are they willing to make compromises? Are they coming from a good family? This list is not exhaustive, but seriously, think about all these things. Do they make you happy more than they make you frown? Are they willing to confront their demons? Familiarize yourself with how emotional needs work so you can better get yours met and meet the needs of others. It takes a lot of time, but it will save you a lot of pain and maybe a divorce or three down the road. Spend some time to truly get to know each other. How much time? But that is subjective. Only you can judge that. But at least enough time to know them deeply. Their innermost thoughts, dreams, life goals, fears, shame, how they react when the world is not so kind to them. These are things that could probably take a lifetime to know from, you know, from a person. And you shouldn't wait until you know everything, every single detail about their life, but at least get to know the most important things first. On the other hand, if you can take an honest look at your relationship and say that none of these terrible reasons to get married apply to your situation, then great. I hope you enjoyed the video and if it's your first time, don't forget to subscribe and for more personalized assistance, reach me on. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.